In this video, we'll continue our zoo of discrete random variables. We'll talk about the uniform, geometric, and negative binomial random variable. So we'll say that x is uniform with parameters a and b, where they're integers, if and only if the probability mass function is like this, which I'll explain in a second. Um, x is equally likely to take on any value in a to b, and the number of integers between a and b is actually b minus a plus 1, and that's why it's uh, like kind of weird with the plus 1. The expected value of x is what you'd expect. It's the average of the endpoints, and the variance is this messy thing. For example, a roll of a fair six-sided die is uniform 1 to 6, and the probability it takes on any k between 1 and 6 is 1 over 6 minus 1 plus 1, which is 1 6, and hence the off by 1. Now we'll talk about the geometric random variable, which comes from the Bernoulli process. So uh, we say a random variable is geometric with parameter p if it's the waiting time, the number of flips up to and including our first head. So here it was 3, here it's 1, and here it's 4. So that's the number of flips up to and including our first head. So what is the probability that x equals 4? Well, the only way that uh, our first head is on the fourth try is if the first three were tails. So this is the only way that x is 4. And so um, this probability is 1 minus p times 1 minus p times 1 minus p and p because they're independent. And we get 1 minus p cubed times p. So in general, the probability that it takes k flips to get our first head, well, we have to first get k minus 1 tails followed by our head. And uh, you can actually sh show that the probability mass function sums to 1 if you remember your formula for geometric series, and that's also why it's called geometric random variable. So now let's do an example. So suppose x is geometric with parameter p. What do we think the expected value of x is if the probability of head is half? Well, I personally think it would be 2. If um, the probability of heads were 1 tenth, I would think it would take me 10 tries to get my first head. And 1 seventh, it would be 7. So intuitively, the expected value of x is 1 over the probability. We'll prove this later in an elegant way, but the next slide will use brute force. And the variance is also messy. So we'll say x is geometric p, if and only if it has the probability mass function like this. And, and here are the mean and variance, which we'll show later. x is the number of independent coin flips with probability heads p up to and including the first head. Now we'll talk about the negative binomial random variable. Here are three geometric random variables we had earlier. The negative binomial with parameter 1 and p is the waiting time until our first success. And here it's 3, the same as geometric p, because we're only waiting for one success. Negative binomial 2p is the waiting time until our second success, and here it would be 4. Um, 3p is the waiting time until our third head, which happened to be 8 here. Notice that the negative binomial with 3 and p is actually the sum of three geometric random variables. It's a uh, waiting time until the first head, then the second head, and the third head, and this is important uh, for later on. So what is the probability mass function? So the, um, this last one actually must be heads, because that's when we stop. We stop when we get our third head. Then exactly two out of the first seven must be heads. We don't care where the heads go, the first two heads go, but the, we must have ended on the third head. So the probability that it took eight tries to get three heads is in the first seven, we must get two heads, and then we have two heads here and five tails. And then we finally multiply by that final head, which is p. And so the probability mass function is, the probability it takes k tries to get our successes is in the first k minus one flips, we get r minus one heads. And then we get um, our heads total and k minus r tails total. So the expected value is hard, um, similar to binomial, but we can do a trick. So the linearity of expectation uh, trick. So if x1 through xr are geometric and independent, then x is the sum of these random variables as we showed earlier, right? The waiting time until the third success is the waiting time until the first, and then from the first to the second, and from the second to the third. So the expected value of x is just going to be r times the expected value of one geometric, which is one over p, and so we get r over p. And we have this other property that we had to accept last time, which is the variance of a sum of independent variables is the sum of the variances. So the variance of a geometric is this. So the variance of our negative binomial will be r times that, because it's the sum of r copies um, of a geometric. So here's a summary of what we just talked about. So now let's do an example. You gamble by flipping a fair coin independently up to and including the first head. If it takes k tries, you'll earn 2 to the k dollars. So if your first head was on the third flip, you would earn 2 cubed or 8 dollars. How much would you pay to play this game? So well, let's compute the expectation. So let x be uh, the number of flips until the first head, and so it's geometric with parameter half because it's a fair coin. Then the probability mass function of x is this. And um, the most important thing to notice first is that we want the expected value of 2 to the x. The earnings is 2 to the however much we made, uh, however many flips it takes. And this is not equal to 2 to the e of x, which would, would have been 4. Instead, we use the law of the unconscious statistician. And we have 2 to the k times the probability of being k for each value uh, that it can take on. And the number of flips can go from 1 to infinity. And um, it actually turns out that you get this infinite sum of 1s. And so your expected earnings is actually infinite. So you should expect to pay any amount of money to play this game.